Hey everyone, so today is a very chilly and windy day and the last few weeks have been nice and warm out here and the roses have put on a lot of growth. So today what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna fertilize our roses and we're actually gonna spray them with uh, this disease control because it rains here a lot. And one thing we noticed last year was a lot of the uh, black spot, uh, some minor powdery mildew and uh, some of the blight that we got from some of the other uh, uh, plants that were around the garden. So to prevent that, we're gonna spray these guys down with disease control. We're not gonna do that till later in the evening because that's the best time to actually spray them. You don't wanna spray them when the sun's um, completely blasting on the roses because it starts to dry up your foliage with that spray on there. Um, Angie is out in the garden right now. She's actually um, digging around the roses. That way we can get the fertilizer in there. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, how much fertilizer we're actually applying because I know there are some questions as to how much fertilizer we actually use when we use the granular fertilizer. Uh, by this point, we've been using it for so long that we actually do eyeball it, but I'll go ahead and give you the exact measurements of what you need to put into your roses, whether they're potted or they're in the ground. All right, so before we get going out in the garden and start fertilizing, one more thing I forgot to mention about the disease control. Uh, another reason why we do spray at night is because um, because the warm weather's coming up, there's a lot of pollinators that are starting to make their way into the garden, and we want to spray that at night so it dries up overnight and they won't be harmed, you know, the next following morning, and that way they'll be happy. All right, so let's go see what Angie is doing out here. Almost done? Yeah, almost done. One more. I'm getting Miss Jubilee celebration over here. Ready for fertilizing. Don't want to remove too much of the mulch. I know we'll be mulching pretty soon. You brought the mulch, right? Yep. Okay, I just don't want for there to be any runoff and there's no fertilizing. All done. All right, so I'm just gonna set the camera down here and that way we can get these roses fertilized and talk a little bit about the fertilizing. So um, one thing I did wanna talk about is using the, ro the rose tone. So we talked about how much to actually use. Again, like I said, we usually just eyeball it because we've been using it for so long. Um, but with these plants in the ground, you wanna use about half a cup of rose tone around the base of the plant and the drip line of the rows. Um, and then for those in containers, you wanna use about a quarter cup. You don't need too much in a container because you don't want that runoff um, that you would normally get in the roses that are underground where when it does rain and you do water, it starts to run off the bed and stuff like that. So you wanna use that half cup to make sure you get plenty of that fertilizer in there. And again, in the containers, you can use about a quarter of a cup of the, uh, the rose tone in there. All right, so this is the first rose we fertilized right now. This is Jubilee Celebration. I hope the wind's not bothering the video too much because it is starting to pick up here a little bit. But uh, just talk about the fertilizer again. Uh, so right now we're fertilizing. This is right before uh, they start to put on some growth. We'll go ahead and fertilize one more time after the first flush. And then around summer, midsummer, when we start to deadhead a lot of the expended blooms, we'll go ahead and give it another shot of fertilizer that way come the end of summer and fall because we still get some blooms in this uh, zone 7b out here uh, i think when we were in north carolina we actually had some blooms in thanksgiving that was an 8a um, but it still seems to be a little bit hotter in 7b so uh, you never know uh, again these were just newly established last year so we didn't get that full flush of blooms during fall like we did in north carolina but i'm expecting it to do something great here because they have been established they have been in containers for some time now but uh Next, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and fertilize the rest of the roses and just going to talk about uh, the roses that we do have in the garden as well. Okay, so I have two more on this side that I need to get. This one is also easy peasy. And that is, this one's from Proven Winners. And then this one over here, and she's pink, little pink blooms. And then this right here is Queen Elizabeth. But I wasn't sure to fertilize her because, um, she might be on her way out. 
Um, she gets, I'm going to talk a little bit about them so we can have a little bit of fun while we're fertilizing too. You're, you're not just watching us fertilize and that's it. Um, Queen Elizabeth is looking beautiful right now, but she, I don't know. She gets really sick on me and I think she needs a lot more, more sun. Um, but you know, maybe she just needed to get established too. So I do have another rose on the way and I'm feeling a little bad on getting rid of her because I've always called her the queen of her garden. So we'll see what happens with her. Y'all tell me guys, does she stay or does she go? Okay, so now we're all done with this side. And right here we have Weas Weasley, is that the way I say it? Weasley 2008 rose. And then here is Malinu, beautiful, beautiful orange colors that he gives. I call him a, a he, teasing Georgia. Wow, she's been just doing amazing going up the wall right there. Hopefully I get to see some type of pretty blooms by the window right here. And there's a clematis somewhere there too that I've put. And then this one right here is a proven winner. So I still haven't, um, planted her at all. I, we did feed her. Um, and I'm trying to remember the name, double pink. I think this one is the also easy double, double pink. And a lot of the ones, um, um, that are the, the proven winner varieties. If you know, for some reason you do not want to grow roses because they're hard to grow because of all the stuff of the disease and you know, black spot, go with those roses. They're super easy and beautiful and they're always blooming. Oh, this one right here is Darcy Bustle. Some of them I've kept in containers and it's because the, the lack of space that we have, um, most of it, you know, the reason. So that's Darcy Bustle. And um, this right here, and they're most, they're, uh, the ones that are not proven winners are all David Austin's. Um, this right here is Brother Gadfell. And this is one of Ambrose's favorites, mine too. Beautiful, beautiful globular um, pink bloom. Just gorgeous big blooms that turn to like a peony kind of um, bloom. And then this is another Pearl and Winners one, which is my favorite Pearl and Winners rose. Double, um, also easy, double red. She's ready to go. Beautiful rose. I had her in the front last year. And then this right here, our boys, our three boys, Harlow Carr, the most thorniest roses that we have um, besides Gertrude Jekyll. Yeah, can be dangerous. <laughs> Ambrose is not a big fan of those thorns. <laughs> Things will get him all the time. And this right here is Jubilee Ce Celebration. We had two of them. And when we planted them um, um, last year, one of them didn't make it where the double um, also easy red is at. But it's okay. We got one right here and can't wait to see her. So we're gonna head to the front right now and we're gonna do two more um, and then we'll finish off with the back. So come on. So I'm not sure where you wanna, cause this one's an interesting one to talk about that I have right here is a second, let me just get it. Okay, so an awkward shot here. Okay, so this little rose right here that you see, you want me to move around? This little rose that you see right here is a second brother Gadfell. It was a little piece that um, broke off and one of the, we, we had a hurricane back in North Carolina, Hurricane Florence, and a piece broke and it just propagated itself on that same bed and we brought it along and it's here now and it's been doing amazing um, growing all the roses have been pruned too. We didn't get to do that that um, that video, guys. Sorry about that. Any questions? You know, go ahead and feel free to to ask on the pruning. But everyone has been pruned, so there's going to be another second cat. So excited for that one. Then we're going to head to the front. We have a crazy one, a crazy gal up there. That's Strawberry Hill, and that's why I like to call this area Strawberry Hill. One because I, we plant a lot of pink during the growing season. And another reason is because of her, a strawberry hill rose. Another David Austin. So I'm gonna see how I'm gonna get there. 
So we have in Tranger, and we actually bought, oh look, here's a little lizard. That's like my first little of that kind of lizard to see. Sorry guys, <laughs> getting so excited to see little lizards. Okay, so let me feed it. Sorry for all the noise of the bag. Running out of this bag already. But as I'm feeding it, look at those leaves, those glossy leaves. So Strawberry Hill, it's a climber, beautiful leaves, and it had leaves through winter. Um, no black spot, no black spot at, at all. Gave a few um, flowers last year, and it's put on such, such a lot of growth. It's only gonna be, what, its second year for us here. Um, yeah, so. She's looking beautiful and can't wait. We're actually gonna put her in an obelisk pretty soon. So we'll have a video out on that. So now let's go ahead and head back to the back of the garden and show you the rest of the roses. So this right here is Gertrude Jekyll, one of the three that we have, climber. Looking pretty good. Probably need to train him a little bit more. It's putting in a lot of growth. Um, all right, so let, now let's go to the other one. Second Gertrude Jekyll. Done amazing in a container. This one's the one that puts a really big show, so I'm excited to see it this, this um, year. And then right here is Olivia Austin, one of my favorites. She is such a healthy, healthy rose. And I know a lot of you um, went ahead and, and grabbed uh, an Olivia for this year. So I'm excited to see what you guys tell me, what everybody tells me how she does in your garden too. So I know I'm going really, really quick with the roses because I, you know, it's just a video about fertilizing the spring. We don't want to make it so long. I just wanted to show you what to, you know, what we're looking forward to showing you for this, you know, for this year with roses and we will be adding more roses too. Um, later in the year, we'll go ahead, you know, as they start to bloom, we'll come back and do just video after video of roses. So let's go ahead and head to the back inside the secret garden and go fertilize the, fertilize the rest of them. Random rows in the middle of the garden in here. Um, we're still, you know, figuring out where to put everybody. So this is Litchfield Angel. And I know I didn't explain, you do have to water right after you fertilize. So we're gonna fertilize everyone and then we're gonna go ahead and after the video, give everybody their drink of water. So now we're gonna go ahead and go to the other roses. The climber one right here is another Gertrude Jekyll. It's putting a lot of new growth. As you can see, it's, it's put on a lot. And then a fun one for this year is Mill on the Floss right here. These are more of the, the roses that love to be more in shady areas. Um, and this year, um, last year I wasn't too happy with Mill on the Floss. Um, new rows, completely new rows in our garden. So we'll see what she does this year. Looking forward to showing you more on her. And I have, I'm gonna say one more rose to go. And she's on the back, that's Pearly Gates. She is not a David Austin bitch. She is a beautiful, beautiful rose. And she belongs to our daughter, one of her daughters, um, Alexis. Okay, so I'm laughing. This is like our, I'm laughing right now because I said we only had one more rose to go, which this is Pearly Gates, but surprise, we have another one. I'm forgetting. So this is our, our little messy area back here. So that, this is Pearly Gates, climber, doing beautiful, and I just can't wait to see those big flowers. And this right here, I completely forgot, I think, the Lady Gardener. I'm looking at Ambrose because I'm like, I didn't even know we had this one. <laughs> the Lady Gardener. And yeah, I have her here because I'm figuring out where to put her. Um, we're still working in this area. It's one of the most muddy, it's actually the muddiest area of all. 
So um, we're probably going to put more, um, what is it, stone and gravel right here just to clean it up more. Um, but as you can see, they're all ready to go. And that's it. I think that's it for the roses. We have a couple more that we're waiting, David Austin's. I'm going to say four more that we have coming on the way and can't wait to show you all. So as you can see, you know, they're all looking so beautiful already, so healthy with their beautiful leaves. And I, I just wish it always looked like this. So we're hoping really, really <laughs> bad that this year it's a great year for roses. So we will be coming back in a few as, you know, we wait for the sun to start coming down to spray them. It's dark now, it's getting dark. The sun's gone already and it's so cold. Yeah. And I've already, I've already, um, we, well, we fed the roses with the rose tone and watered them. Yep. So now. So the next thing to do is we're gonna go ahead and spray them down. I got my mix ready. So we're gonna go ahead and close the video out with just spraying them down and showing you how much I actually coat them. Um, again, this is the perfect time to do it. Uh, there's no sun out, so it's not gonna dry it up. And then if it does rain, uh, this formula that we're using here is actually uh, uh, good for the rain so it won't wash away um, as much as any other normal disease resistant um, spray. Yeah, and just excited to, you know, we went, I hope, I hope it's not a long video. We didn't make it too long. We just wanted to go ahead and show you what's going on. I know a lot of our rose lovers have been asking what happened to all the roses since we got here. And we just wanted to, you know, show you what we have and we do have four more coming our way. Yep. Four more DAs, which we are so excited to share with you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and close out this video with just spraying down the roses. so sorry Claire yep she forgot another rose bad rose mom <laughs>